What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as a D365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and OneDrive for Business, and we're going to look at the trigger, which is when a file is created, properties only. So there are two when a file is created triggers, one is the when a file is created and one is this properties only one. The when a file is created kind of gives you information, but it's not very user friendly. Um, it's more how it's encoded, how it's um, programmed in the back end. It's not really the display names and the, the, the nice data that we're used to. So it's kind of like a, you know, like GUIDs for the user ID um, or uncoded, you know, records for the user ID and things like that, rather than and things like file path is kind of the, the whole thing. It's not the actual nice bit that we need. So it's not that useful for people most of the time. The properties only one allows you to actually get some of that bit more you know, friendly metadata out. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. So I'm in Power Automate. I'm going to select the OneDrive for Business connector here. And then down here is when a file is created, properties only. So we choose this, we then asked for the folder. So we can click on the folder icon then click on the arrow. And then I'm going to choose my Power Automate folder here. So choose that one. And then this is going to run one and create a file inside of this folder. There is also the advanced options, which allows you to include subfolders. Uh, we don't set this to no, but this would allow you to run this on anything that's in a subfolder of that folder as well. We're going to click on New Step, and we're going to go to Compose, and we're going to click Compose. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to put the um, we're going to put the modified by. Uh, last modified by dynamic content in here. So what this is going to do is this is going to pull my name back. So previously when we've used something like this, it didn't pull my name, it actually pulled the, um, pulled like this like 10, 12 digit, uh, you know, character uh, string, which didn't really give as much information as to who that was. This will actually bring back my name. So let's test this out. So we'll click on test. Say so I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. And then that's running, and now I'm going to go over to my OneDrive. So this is my OneDrive. I'm in my Power Automate folder here, and I'm going to create a new workbook. So we'll uh, put some test data into there. We can see it's saved at the top. Um, just OneDrive is nice and quick with that. We'll click back to Power Automate, and we can see that the flow runs successfully. And it's just taking a moment to load up this screen. Um, I don't think it's trying to come back, so I'm just trying to go out and just view the flow run. And we can see here that we get a lot more information. We can see we get this JSON body here, um, and we get all this information like uh, the name of it, uh, the book, um, the last one about by Matt Collins. So if we go into the compose action, we can see Matt Collins there. Now, if I go back to my book for a second and just call this something like. Um, uh, what should we call it? Um, test Excel book one, something like that. Save, we can go back to Power Automate and we'll click edit. And what we will do is we will add that in as well. So we will go and we'll get the uh, name. So there's a couple of cool things here. We have name, uh, which is the whole name of the file. And we also have uh, name without extension. So we can actually just get a name without the extension as well. And we can also get uh, is it last last modified time. Last modified time. Let's get all three of these. And that'll be good. That's what we'll need. So if I click on test again, you'll notice that now we actually have a third option. We have use data from OneDrive for business. So if I click on that and click save and test. What that's going to do once that runs successfully is that's actually going to look at that folder and it's just going to find the first file in that folder and bring that back. So that's an interesting thing as well. So that's not, um, or is it first file in that folder? Yes, it is because it'll be, it'll be alphabetically. So it just finds that first file. So that's an interesting thing that that does. Um, but we can also use something from a previous test as well. Uh, so we can trigger that second one and we can get that data. So because it is triggered from a previous file, we are still getting all the data, but at least this shows you the potential of what you can do here. 
Um, so in terms of this, we get uh, my name or like my, my previous name. Um, we have the name of the book, um, so book.xlsx. Uh, we have the book without the extension, and we also have the time uh, in ISO format. So this is a lot better to use than the other when a file is created. It gives you different information. It makes it in a bit more user-friendly or reader-friendly uh, style. So if this is the sort of information you want, you want to choose this one, else you can choose the other one if it's just a way to trigger something and you don't need any of these data, any of these data properties. So yeah, what do you guys think about this trigger? Did you know the difference between the two? Is this the one that you use? Is the other one the one that you use? Let me know the reason why down below. If you did like this video, if you like and share it with your friends, it'd be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll see you next time.